It was a good win for us tonight. Uh, obviously, the story of the game was was both Jaden Hill pitching six shutout innings. I thought he looked extremely sharp, dominant, um, battled really hard. I don't even know how many strikeouts he had. He only had four, which was a good thing, allowed him to pitch six innings for us tonight. We wanted him to throw 75 pitches. He threw 77 pitches, so we were pretty close there. I told him before he went out there for the seventh inning, I really don't want to take you out in the middle of the inning, so you better pitch a clean inning. It, it, you get three batters. If you get all three of them, you get to finish the game uh, coming off the mound with the rest of your teammates. Otherwise, I'm going to have to take you out in the middle of the inning. And I think that challenge, you know, he took it to heart. Trey Morgan put on a clinic over there at first base with his footwork around the bag, including that last play Jaden threw over there. There were a couple throws by Thompson that, that Trey was just phenomenal. He made a phenomenal catch on a pop-up, got a couple of hits. You know, he, he was outstanding. Um, but the other story of the game, of course, was our, our four home runs. And that was nice to see, too, you know, um, uh, that all of those home runs were, you know, were really hit well. And Belosa was a real leader getting it started. I told you we were going to face two really good left-handed pitchers from this team. And, uh, you know, their numbers last weekend were not great. And that was really shocking to me because these kids both have had good careers for Youngstown State. And that, that lefty tonight struck out 10 of our batters, which was a little bit concerning. But he was good. You know, he mixed his pitches well. And when he made a couple of mistakes, we took advantage of him. He hung a couple of curveballs and we were able to hit him out of the ballpark. So overall, a good win for us. We got to get our rest tonight. We got a big day tomorrow. It's going to be a long day. And uh, we're going to face two teams that are going to give us their best shot. No doubt about it. Coach, just talk about Jaden's never gone this long before. Career high six innings. How much of a positive impact is that on the next step of building him up, especially heading into conference play? Well, Jaden is capable, as I've told you many times, David, that he's capable of going deep into games. There's no reason why he can't. He's a great athlete. He's got arm strength. Uh, he's, he's got great physical conditioning. Um, and he throws a lot of strikes. And, you know, if a guy's wild and he strikes out a lot of batters, then he may not be able to go deep in the game because he runs his pitch count up so high. But Jaden shouldn't do that. You know, he throws so many strikes and he mixes his pitches well. Allen always calls a great game with him out there. So this is, you know, this is something that I would expect him to be able to do. I just don't want, didn't want to rush it. I wanted him as good as he is, you know, he's still a human being and he hasn't done it yet for an extended period of time. So you just don't want to rush it and force, force something. And then maybe he injures himself because you're forcing it to happen. Maybe we forced it a little bit too much two years ago when he was a freshman. And, you know, I told Alan, yeah, it's great. We're going to try to get him to 75 pitches, but if he has one long inning of over 20 pitches, then I'm going to shut him down earlier than 75 pitches and we're not going to push it. But he was in complete command the whole night. I, was, I wasn't all that brokenhearted that he gave up a base hit because I know the fans would have been really upset with me if I'd had to hook him with a no hitter going like I did with Aaron Nola several years ago. But uh, I would have had to do that to, to make sure we kept him healthy. Hey, Paul, you know, I know you warned us in the preseason about Trey Morgan and his defense, but I mean, just, you know, you mentioned the clinic that he put on, especially in that sixth inning. I mean, just how big of a difference maker can he be for you guys at first base this year? If our infielders just get it somewhere close to him to give him a chance, I, I expect him to pick every ball. I expect him to stretch. I mean, his footwork around the bag is, you know, I, I think his father worked with him all his life, but it just looks so instinctive to me. He knows when to keep his foot on the base. He's done. I've, I've watched it all fall. I've watched it in the preseason. And now in our short season so far, he's made several unbelievable plays, saved errors for our infield. And, um, you know, when you have a guy like that over there, it's just such a major asset, but he's also one of our better hitters. And I told you that. And, and uh, the other night, uh, the, or I think it was Monday night against Louisiana Tech, he had probably the hardest 0 for 6 in the history of the game. He should have had five hits that night. Uh, he just hit missiles all night at people. So he's going to be a good hitter for us. He's an outstanding first baseman. I, I just think we have one of the best players that you possibly can get in college as a freshman. Hey, Coach, great win tonight. Um, Thank you. I want to talk a little bit about, you know, we don't normally get to see – we don't normally see Alan Dunn go out uh, and make a pitching change. What kind of went into uh, him being him, – him pulling Blake Money? We've seen him struggling a little bit. But what kind of went into that decision for AD to pull him? Well, I told AD yeah, to to just stall because I once, once the second hitter got on base, 
I, I usually don't like to bring in a closer with the tying run at the plate. I'd like to give him a little bit of, of wiggle room if you can, because all it takes is one pitch, one swing, and all of a sudden the game's tied if the tying run is at the plate. But I also didn't want to get him up and throwing needlessly because we've got a double header tomorrow. So I was kind of towing that line a little bit. So I had him get up at the, you know, after first runner got on base and play some light catch. Fortunately, it doesn't take Fontenot very long to get ready. So I, I had a AD stall once the second batter got the, that got the hit. And I told him what be out, stay out there as long as you can. And then look at me. And if I get the word from the bullpen that he's ready, then you go ahead and just make the change because I preferred to bring him in with the tying run in the on deck circle. And once, once uh, Fontenot was ready, we met, went ahead and made that move and, you know, it gave him a little bit of wiggle room and it wasn't necessary anyway. I, I love those two pitch, two out saves. So he'll be ready to go tomorrow with a double header tomorrow. It was, I, I was concerned that I even had to use him, but fortunately he didn't have to work too hard. I don't even know if he worked up a sweat. Yeah, Paul. Coach, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Coach Chessa Boucher with WVLA. Um, just talk about what you've seen from Gavin Dugas and how he's been hot at the plate and also talk about that two run blast from Cade Beloso. Well, the, the home run by Cade Beloso, as I mentioned before, was just great leadership on his part. You know, there's a veteran player against a tough left-handed pitcher. You know, he, he struck out, um, uh, did he strike out Dylan to start the game? I think he struck out Dylan to start the game. He got, you know, Cade, you know, Trey got a base hit and then he got Cade Doty to pop up, you know, two of our best hitters. He got out right-handed hitters and then you got a left-handed hitter stepping in against a tough left-handed pitcher and he hits it into the stands and gives us a, a, a lead right out of the gate, which is, which is always good to have. So Cade, Cade just showed a lot of leadership there. You know, G Gavin Dugas, you know, I'm just really proud of him. You know, he had a rough start the first couple of games. And, um, you know, this is a humbling game. You know, it's not easy. You know, I played this game. Uh, the only thing I knew about hitting, uh, uh, the only thing I knew about pitching is I couldn't hit it. These kids are much better hitters than I, am, I ever was. And yet, you know, I challenge them sometimes because they're so talented. And, you know, Gavin had to struggle the first couple of games, but since then, you know, he's, he's wanted to prove that he belongs to be in there every day, and he's showing that. And he's just been a, a real force for us. And, you know, the, listen, this game is really hard to play, and you just got to know who to hit your wagon to. And the kids you choose to, to believe in are the ones that, that determine whether or not you're going to have a successful team. And I believe in Gavin, and I believe in, you know, many of the other players. Yeah, Paul, the, the middle part of your lineup tonight, the batting order really, really caught fire. I mean, like – Everybody seemed like they were, were getting big hits. Just talk about the, the middle of the lineup really playing well tonight. That play, well, I, you know, I, it was it was a little bit misleading how close the game was. You would think that we let up, but you know, we had some bad breaks. You know, I thought Trey had a good good at bat there and hit, just hit that ball right at the third baseman. Turned into a double play after it looked like we had something going. You know, we had second and third there, and I thought Jordan had actually had a pretty good cut. Just kind of topped the ball to the third baseman, and they were able to get out of the inning. So. You know, overall, I thought we had a lot of good at-bats. We had a lot of strikeouts, unfortunately, but I don't really think that we weren't competing up there at the plate overall. We just had a little bit bad luck to be able to keep it from being a one-sided victory. And hopefully tomorrow, you know, more hits will fall and we'll continue to swing the bats well and, and you know, be, be a total team behind A.J. Labus in game one. Last question. I'm putting a time time limit on me. I got to go do the radio show, I guess. Anybody? Good? Okay.